O Lord, I have trust in your merciful love. My heart will rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord, who has been bountiful with me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that always pondering spiritual things we may carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> A reading from the beginning of the book of Sirach. All wisdom comes from the Lord, and with him it remains forever and is before all time. <clears throat> the sand of the seashore, the drops of the rain, the days of eternity, who can number these? Heaven's height, earth's breadth, the depths of the abyss, who can explore these? Before all things else, wisdom was created, and prudent understanding from eternity. The word of God on high is the fountain of wisdom, and her ways are everlasting. To whom has wisdom's roots been revealed? Who knows her subtleties? To whom has the discipline of wisdom been revealed, and who has understood the multiplicity of her ways? There is but one, wise and truly awe-inspiring, seated upon his throne. There is but one, most high, all-powerful creator, king, and truly awe-inspiring one, seated upon his throne, and he is the God of dominion. It is the Lord he created her through the Holy Spirit and has seen her and taken note of her. He has pointed her birth upon all his works. Upon everything according to his bounty, he has lavished her upon his friends. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. The Lord is king. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is king. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is king in splendor robe, robed in the Lord, and girt about with strength. The Lord is king, he is robed in majesty. And he has made the word firm, not to be moved. Your throne stands firm from of old, from everlasting you are, O Lord. The Lord is king, he is robed in majesty. Your decrees are worthy of trust indeed. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, for length of days. The Lord is King, He is robed in majesty. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Our Savior Jesus Christ has destroyed death and brought life to light through the gospel. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus came down from the mountain with Peter, James, and John and approached the other disciples. They saw a large crowd around them and scribes arguing with them immediately on seeing him. The whole crowd was utterly amazed. They ran up to him and greeted him. He asked them, What are you arguing about with them? Someone from the crowd answered him, Teacher, I have brought to you my son possessed by a mute spirit. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth, grinds the teeth, and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive it out, but they weren't able to do so. He said to them in reply, O faithless generation, how long will I be with you? How long will I endure you? Bring him to me. They brought the boy to him. When he saw him, the spirit immediately threw the boy into convulsions. As he fell to the ground, he began to roll around and foam at the mouth. Then he questioned his father, How long has this been happening to him? He replied, Since childhood. It has often thrown him into a fire or into water to kill him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, If you can, everything is possible to the one who has faith. Then the boy's father cried out, I do believe, help my unbelief. 
Jesus, on seeing a crowd rapidly gathering, rebuked the unclean spirit and said to it, Mute and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. Shouting and throwing the boy into convulsions, it came out. It became like a corpse, which caused many to say he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, raised him, and he stood up. When he entered the house, his disciples asked him in private, Why could we not drive the spirit out? He said to him, This kind can only be come out through prayer. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Good morning, Father. Growing up, uh, I'd often heard this Gospel passage and... Uh, I guess my mind took, okay, there had to be a natural explanation. And I thought about epilepsy or sort of palsy or something. And, uh, and it wasn't until I entered the, into the seminary that I actually became familiar with studying that, yes, there really were evil spirits who could possess a person and mimic a real disease. Okay. So... As now, as a priest, I say, yes, this could have been a very real occurrence of an evil spirit within the boy. And yes, that is possible for doing that. A, ch uh, a demon can possess a child through, the, uh, through something that a, an adult does. All that being said, that's not the crux of what, uh, what I want to focus in on today. Because... As I read this passage this morning, after my first cup of coffee, I had to go back and get a second cup because it made absolutely no sense to me. Why, I couldn't figure it out, but this gospel made no sense to me today. Because you have this situation, let me describe it as it, it unfolds this morning for me. Jesus... Peter, James, and John are coming down the mountain from the transfiguration. And as they come down, they find the crowd has gathered. The disciples have been trying to drive out the demon, and it hasn't worked. <clears throat> and that's where Jesus enters in. And then later, after he drives out the demon, he says, they ask him why they couldn't do it. He said, oh, this kind can only be driven out by prayer. Had I been there, I know me, I would have probably looked at him and said, well, what in the, you think we were doing? Huh? Son of God, omnipotent one you are. <clears throat> We've been praying. What? Was our prayer not good enough? You say, you can only be driven out through prayer. Something was odd about that. And so I, I, I said, let me go and double check myself. And this is the reason why. Just to prove to you that I, I'm not crazy, I'm just OCD. Um, Mark chapter 9, verse 29 from the Navarre Bible series. This kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer and fasting. This is Ignatius, Revised Standard Edition. Verse 29. And he said to them, This kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer and fasting. Do a rings. Let's see here. Mark 9. Let's see here. Uh, 29. Let's see where we can. Ah. Uh, 28. This one is in verse 28. It says, This kind can go out by nothing but by prayer and fasting. King James Version. The Protestant King James Version. Mark 9, verse 29. This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Back to our lectionary. This kind can only come out through prayer, prayer, period. Well, 
what happened to fasting. <clears throat> Two explanations. One, the simplest, editor's error. An editor made a fault, forgot the last portion of the line. That's the simplest and the one that we'll go with. Things happen, mistakes happen. Or, option two, which I don't want to, I, do, I wouldn't want to reflect on, I don't think it's a real option, but it could have been that whoever was editing it just didn't like fasting and decided to get rid of it, purposefully. But I doubt that that happened. But there are situations where prayer is not enough. We have to fast. Why? Because fasting is good for us. Fasting increases within us or strengthens within us, better word, strengthens within us, within us the cardinal virtue of temperance. Temperance is that mode of virtuous living between gluttony and starvation, per se. Overeating and not eating. That damages us. Temperance is what we would call using your good common sense. Knowing when to say when, whatever example you want to use. Temperance is important. And as we approach this season of Lent, it's not enough for us just to pray. That's why the church instructs us. Pray and fast. And give alms. The big three. Might I encourage you? And I knew I hated to go long to explain this, but I wanted to. Fasting is fundamentally important for your spiritual life. You have to fast. What you give up is your choice. It could be the cell phone that we're filming the mass with. Because that tells you on Monday, give or take, how many hours you spent the last week on it. And I'm sure that we wasted some time on it. We could put it to the side. We could fast from self-aggrandizement. Promoting our own selves. Telling everybody about what we think, what we do, our opinions. It could be from food. It could be from desserts. Fasting can be from the television. We need to do something. We need to be self-sacrificing. And that's what fasting is, to self-sacrifice. Why? Because that draws us in to the cross of Christ, who himself offered himself up a sacrifice. That's what we call the Mass. The sacrifice of the Mass. It's not a communal meal. If you want a communal meal, we'll go to the Episcopal Church. It's a self-sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. So, again, prayer, fasting, prayer, fasting. Make sacrifice. So, that gives you something to consider. Now, mighty God be with you, may he bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat>
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. <clears throat> Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise of the Lord your name. Our good, good Lord, As we celebrate your mysteries, O Lord, with the observance that is your due, we humbly ask you that what we offer to the honor of your majesty may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father Most Holy. Through your beloved Son, Jesus the Christ, your worth whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for your holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and took willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Thomas our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. We await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, 
you take away the sins of the world and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Glory to God, I pray that you should stand on the army. But I'm going to say the words of my soul. and sing songs to your name, O Most High. Let us pray. <clears throat> Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may experience the effects of the salvation which is pledged to us by these mysteries. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thank Amen. you, God. Prayer to St. Michael. All Lord, Lord, Michael, the Lord, 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 be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power, thrust into hell, Satan and all the other evil spirits, who wander through the world, seek and ruin our souls. Amen. Divine praises. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus, the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, prayer for me. Blessed be the great mother of God, Mary, most holy. Blessed be your holy night of conception. Blessed be your glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, virgin and mother. Blessed be St. Joseph, the most chaste spouse. Blessed be God, his angels, and his saints. 